Hello, everybody. This is Thomas Lesh with BonfireAudioPro.com. Today, I'm going to show you exactly how I use Adobe Audition 2017 as a starting point for voiceover and dialogue enhancement. Uh, this is taking into consideration if I had nothing else to use and was just using the awesome stock products, uh, EQs, and plugins that come with Adobe Audition. Uh, something else to keep quickly in mind is that every dialogue you're working with, whether it's yours or a client's, the voiceover, it, it's going to need something different. But there are some fundamental basics to start with, and you just season to taste from there. Okay, so I've got a clip that I recorded. It's a quote, apparently, uh, according to my organizer that I use every day. This is a quote um, from Dolly Parton. So let's take a listen to the raw file that I recorded with my, uh, I used an Audio-Technica 4033, which is a really good mic. So it's actually a, a pretty good starting point. So let's take a listen. The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you've got to put up with the rain. Okay, so generally the first step in enhancing voiceover dialogue is going to be EQ. And the reason is, and I like to use this parametric equalizer inside of Adobe Audition. So if you go to your effects rack here on the top slot and choose filter and EQ and parametric equalizer. I like it because it's easy to look at and it's easy to see what I'm doing. So the reason it's important to generally start with with an EQ is because you're most likely going to do a low roll off and uh, and a high roll off. So and that's important so that you're not boosting frequencies when you do compression later. So if you're going to attenuate or reduce any levels, you want to do it prior to compression. Okay. So down here on the left of the parametric equalizer, you'll see a button that says HP. That's a high pass filter. I'm going to select that, and then I can now take that that node and drag it to the right. I like to start at about 100 and then I generally will bring this to 18 and let that just slowly roll off nice and soft and then take the 2. I like to boost it's on a the Q is a 2 and I like that. I can take the 1 off here disable that. So here on the 2 I'm going to grab it and just boost it slightly at about 160, 150, 160 between 150 and 170 just a couple dB. Then grab your three and turn it over here to around 300 hertz. And I bring just a little dip there. That helps to unmuddy anything. And again, this all depends on the actual file you're working with, the, the, the original um, audio file. Okay, and I'm going to do a slight raise around 2K. I tend to like that as a slight bitiness there uh, using number four. And then I'm going to disable five. I'm going to take my high. And I'm going to bring this up and just brighten up the mix a little bit and bring some presence back to it. Nothing too dramatic. And then sometimes I'll use this low pass and just roll off everything high beyond, uh, you know, 10 to 14 and just kind of a slow knee down. Okay, let's take a listen to what we got here with EQ. The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you've got to put up with the rain. Okay, so I like that. Here's with it and without it. Not a dramatic difference at the moment. The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you've got to put up with the rain. And with it? The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you've got to put up with the rain. It's not a huge difference, but it just sounds slightly tighter and a little bit more crisp and open. Okay, so that is our equal equalizer there, using the parametric equalizer. Next step, I am going to do a, a, a multiband compressor. So if you look inside of the effects, you'll see amplitude and compression. You've got dynamic processing, which has a ton of features to be able to do everything from noise gating to compression, and there's lots of great presets, and you can experiment with that. Do not be afraid to experiment. And there's also a tube modeled compressor, a single band compressor, all really, really good. But myself and a lot of other uh, friends I know in the business swear by this multiband compressor, and I think it's because it looks great, it sounds great, and this preset here called broadcast is a great starting point. It's nice and rich and bold sound and, and it's really what uh, most of what I'm going for in my mixes for Dialog and VO needs. So it's, it's a fantastic starting point. So let's take the multiband compressor and just as it is comes in, let's take a listen and then watch as I modify it to my needs and you can kind of just take a note of that as you're watching. The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you've got to put up with the rain. The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you've got to put up with the rain. 
The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you've got to put up with the rain. The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you've got to put up with the rain. The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you've got to put up with the rain. The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you've got to put up with the rain. The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you've got to put up with the rain. Okay, so what you can see so far is that I've, I've, I'm using the limiter because now I don't need to apply an additional effect or plug in here on my rack. I'm going to use the limiter right inside the multiband compressor. It works great. I'm going to set it at negative 3 dB uh, for this use. I don't want it to go beyond negative 3 dB, which is great for web streaming. And I just pulled my threshold down a little bit on my low end on the first band of my multiband compressor to kind of just... Uh, sort of further tame any uh, too much bassiness. And that's really about it. And I pulled my threshold on the limiter down to negative 17. So I'm really doing a, a good amount of compression and, and uh, leveling here. And you can see all these individual settings. I've just remained, kept the same from within the broadcast uh, uh, preset inside the multiband compressor. And I'm really happy with this so far. So let's take another listen. The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you've got to put up with the rain. And here's without anything. The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you've got to put up with the rain. All right, fantastic. Now, if this was all I had, uh, I would be happy with this. But in a lot of situations, your voiceover is not cutting through the mix the way you want it, whether it's through the music, sound effects, other things going on in your individual uh, project. There's a secret weapon I employ once in a while. And uh, if I had to do it inside of Adobe Audition, again, with what comes stock, I'm going to go down here to Special. I'm going to choose Distortion. Believe it or not, a tiny bit of distortion adds some nice sort of harmonic excitement to the audio file, to the voice, and kind of just allows it to, it gives it a little extra bite, and it gives it enough excitement to cut through the mix. And sometimes that might just be what you need. If you overdo it, you'll totally destroy it, and it, it'll sound horrible. I've created a preset called VO Byte, and literally all I did was, if I reset this, I just simply grabbed a, uh, created a node around the negative 40 dB range and just pushed out slightly. And so you can take a listen to what that sounds like now. The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you've got to put up with the rain. So you can see it just sort of excited it a little bit, made it a little bit more bitey and bold. And of course, it did boost the level a little bit. But you see, I've got it before the multiband compressor. So any boost in level here will be caught in that final limiter that I'm using inside of the multiband compressor. So here's without it. The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you've got to put up with the rain. And then with it. The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you've got to put up with the rain. Okay. All right, so let's just say we like that. So now we can go ahead and bake that in. All right, now I'm gonna go over to my multi-track because I wanna show you in a real life setting here. So I've got my audio, uh, my new voiceover the way I like it, and I've got a music bed that I've created, and I've just sort of done some automation here for the dipping to dip down when the voice comes in. So let's take a listen and see if we did accomplish what we wanted to do. The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you've got to put up with the rain. Thank you guys for watching. Again, this is Thomas with BonfireAudioPro.com with a tip on how to enhance voiceover and dialogue. Keep in mind, this is just a good starting point. There's all kinds of other features and options and plethora of tips and ways to go about this. So I hope that what I've done and the way I work from my starting point helps you. If you have any suggestions, by all means, leave them in the comments. I'm really grateful for that. So until we meet again, take care and be blessed.